I'm Eileen Roach from Diamond. I'm so glad that you joined me today. I'm excited about today's topic. We're going to talk about continuous applique. And if you've never done it, you're really in for a treat. But, you know, we're also doing a brand new thing today. Many of you are watching from YouTube and uh, Facebook, but we're also live right at DZGNS.com. And you'll be able to shop below uh, the video. So if you want to hop over there or if you're not a social media, you know, aficionado, then you can watch on our website. Anyway, today's topic is a whole lot of fun. It's about continuous applique. And I literally mean, I'm going to show you how to do a quilt border that's 45 inches long. We're not going to stitch all 45 inches, but, um, you know, and one piece of fabric, width of fabric. What do you see? It's really a lot of fun. So look at all you folks that are uh, joining in. We have Terry Shopaholic from the ne Netherlands. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And one of our Sandy out in Las Vegas. I'll bet it's hot there. And Barbara's in the colony right here in Texas. And I know it's hot there because we live pretty close. And uh, hello, Rita Ranke. She's up in Wyoming where it's cool again today. So, um, Let's see. Let's go ahead and bring PowerPoint up so we can take a look at uh, what we're going to talk about. So, you know, this is a way that you can finish your quilts really quickly. That border is often the last thing that you want to add to a quilt. And uh, it can be, you know, tedious, time consuming. Maybe it's the maybe it's the one task that still needs to be done and your quilt's not quite complete. And of course, at the end of today's program, we're going to uh, do the on the house reveal. And how many of you enjoyed having Sue Brown here last week? Wasn't it great to have her here? Uh, I love visiting with her and boy, she's doing really great. So it's always good to have her and the OML gang here. Okay, so what do we need if we're going to be doing borders, quilt borders? Number one, we're going to need a snap hoop monster. It's the only hoop I use, obviously, but it is the only hoop to use when you are doing quilting in a hoop because, you know, you want to do, you want to be able to advance that fabric without taking that bottom frame off. And when you're connecting one design to another, the freedom that you have in a snap hoop monster is, in, is you can, doesn't compare it to any other type of hoop. The second thing you're going to need is a design that's been digitized for this type of project. And I got you covered there. And then number three, oh, print and stick target template paper. This product is brand new. Actually, it's um, new and improved. You know, it's a product that we've been selling for several years, but we've changed it up and we have a whole new print and stick target template paper um, and that's completely translucent. And so we'll take a look at that in a moment. But before we do, Let's um, take a closer look at that embroidery design so you can understand how it's digitized and why it works. And Barbara Nancy, it was great. I'm glad you agreed to see Sue Brown last week. And Dawn, you love Snap Hoop Monster. I know they are awesome. I'll tell you, you know, I was just watching a program and everybody in that chat room was saying, I don't even use a standard hoop anymore. I, they hang on my wall and all I use is a snap hoop monster. So I agree. Okay, let's take a look. This is the quilt that I developed this technique for. So all those beautiful seashell blocks uh, are pieced together with a reversible piecing technique, but they needed some kind of frame, something to draw them all together, right? To complete that quilt. And of course, cornerstones, and a continuous border is an easy way to finish any quilt, whether you're piecing, um, you know, in regular quilting on a, on, a, on a regular sewing machine. But when you're doing it in a hoop and with a machine embroidery hoop, you know, it's a little different. And this technique is so much fun. Let's take a look at the embroidery design. Okay. Uh, color, well, there's our design. That's finished. So the the white fabric, the white that you see is actually my quilt sandwich. So that is uh, the backing fabric, the batting, and the white quilt top. That blue substrate that you see is my applique fabric. And of course, the embroidery design is sitting somewhat on top of it. Color one is actually just a stitched straight line. And that's embedded in the machine. 
I mean, into the embroidery design so that it's an alignment guide for you to use as you are traveling down the border. This stitched line will be hidden in the sashed border. Like it, it'll be in the seam allowance. You'll never see it. So you can stitch it in whatever color you want. Um, but let's see, uh, my sewing room, Betty Turner says, my sewing room has dime products everywhere. Oh, well, I love that. So does mine. So does mine. Thank goodness. And here in the studio for sure. Okay, back to our task. Color one is going to be that alignment guide. We're going to stitch that first just on the quilt sandwich. Color two is the accent quilting. And that will also be stitched only on the quilt sandwich. Now on my beautiful border, if I say so myself, I stitched that in white thread so that it just added texture to my quilt sandwich. I didn't do it in a color, so you won't see it really well when we get to the overhead cam, but I just want to explain this uh, four color design. I think it's, four, no, it's three colors. Okay, so the next thing we do is we lay down our applique fabric and we stitch color three, which is going to be the tack down along the wave edge, and then the quilting within the wave itself. It's pretty easy, right? Sounds like it's gonna make a lot of sense. Now, you wanna do speed hooping? Well, you can start with a piece of fabric that is uh, about 25 inches wide by the length of your border. <clears throat> so in my case, just pardon me one minute while I clear my throat. Oh my goodness, that's embarrassing. Sorry about that. Um, so my border length is 45 inches. So my, uh, and I wanna make four borders, right? So I started with a quilt sandwich that was 25 inches wide so that I could place four borders across that 24 inch width, all separated by two inch open space in between the quilting and that placement line. And that gives me lots of wiggle room for an error or two, which most certainly could happen. And it also allows enough fabric for seam allowance on both designs, both borders. We'll get to the fabric so you can see an actual visual of that. I guess this is when we wanna go do that. So let's go ahead over and take a look at that quilt itself. And here you can see, here are, are the pretty seashell blocks. Aren't they so much fun? You know, this quilt I made several years ago and I bought some of the fabrics kinda, I, I sh wanted to name it from sea to so shining sea because this wave fabric this beautiful batik I bought in Tampa, Florida at Keep Me in Stitches, one of our dime dealers. And the, um, the this beautiful light blue I bought in California at one of our dealers in uh, the Huntington Beach area. And I made the quilt by the lakeside in Arkansas. So water, water everywhere, right? Okay. But isn't that beautiful? So as you can see, I kind of have it folded, but these borders are 45 inches. Now my applique is raw edge. There is no satin stitching. And if you know me, when I'm quilting, I don't want any satin stitches. I want it to feel like a real quilt. I want it to be supple and comfortable to be able to, you know, roll up and Really, this is a, a wall hanging, so it just hangs on the wall. But um, so there's no satin stitches at all. Okay, so there we have our quilt. Now let's take a look at that print and stick target template paper so you can see what's so new about it. And uh, let's see, we have, first off, you're going to get 25 sheets of the print and stick target template paper. And you can use it on both an inkjet and a laser jet, jet printer. And it comes eight and a half by 11. You can um, you know, print on, in color or just in black and white, but look how sticky it is, right? So whatever I stick that to, it's going to stay in place, which is ideal. I don't want it flopping around like a piece of paper. Now I'm going to give you a tip when you take a piece of print and stick target template paper out of the package, the first thing I do 
I'm going to pull it out. You can see one side is really shiny. That's the side we want to print on. And then this side is a little dull, right? And that's our protective paper. So the first thing I do is I write a big X on the wrong side of that. And I do that so that I know what side I'm going to print on, but also after I print and I want to store my used templates on this protective paper, I do not want to put it on the wrong side of the paper. I want to put it on the right side. And, you know, it's almost hard to determine which is right and which is wrong. But here is like here you can see I've already marked my back on this one. And so when I store it, it's going to be on this side. Okay, you don't want them to stick on each other. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Also, you can, if you're do doing a really big embroidery design, there's no reason why you can't tile them together. And here, I'll pull these apart so you can get a good look at how I have merged these two templates together. I just overlap them and our software allows you to do this. You kind of have to, you know, be careful when you're pulling it apart. But there's my big template, right? And I've just overlapped them and because they're sticky and tacky, they stay together as one solid piece. And then when I put them back together, I'll just overlap that protective paper and stick it down. And then that is stored and ready for use when I'm ready to make my, uh, Placement. Okay, so let's get that out of the way and let's go back to, well, let's learn how to print a template, right? As you can see on this template, I have two copies and I printed these uh, in my computer and I do that with Embroidery Toolshed. So even if you don't, if you're not comfortable in software, you should use our free Embroidery Toolshed software program that allows you to do exactly this print a template with a crosshair and let's go ahead over let me pull up my software before we switch and i'll show you how to do that okay so here we are in the software program of embroidery tool shed now when you download embroidery tool shed you would have all of these demo versions of all of our software but right now i have only embroidery tool shed selected so that means these are the features of the free software program i've opened my design in the program i can turn on a grid if that's important to me to see the design i guess i don't have that set <laughs> uh, so let's go to print preview and in this screen we are able to change the settings. So what you see on the screen right now, let me bring this in a little bit, is you only see the embroidery design, but we want a crosshair. So we go into settings and I'll put a check mark in crosshair. And oh, I wanna have it across a check mark in actual size and artworks, possibly realistic and stitches. We wanna see the stitches, so we'll click okay. And now you can see I have my embroidery design. It has an arrow, it has my crosshair, and if I have a color printer, it will actually print all the different colors of the design. If you only have black and white, that's fine. It'll just you know uh, print it in grayscale. And then I would go to print. And from this icon is where I would select my um, printer and then make sure I put the copy paper into the printer in the correct orientation. If you're like me, you'll stitch on the wrong side. And anyway, so you'll, you'll get that uh, figured out. Okay, so that's how you print a template in Embroidery Toolshed. Now to conserve paper, you could uh, you know, merge a couple designs and then copy them on your printer, like scan them and then print them only on the uh, sheet of print and stick target template paper. Okay, so we have now seen exactly how we're going to work on in the hoop. And I want you to know that this, does, uh, this is the product that is uh, sponsoring today's episode. 
and it's 19.99 25 sheets good in inkjet and laser jet printers you can also draw on it you can use a sharpie which i'll show you in just a moment so let's go on over to the overhead and you'll notice that um right here i have written a note to myself place on marked line and that because i'm going to mark my fabric and i didn't have a title on this design so i can just write that in and i'm using a, a sharpie a, a fine point sharpie i just let it dry for a moment and then when i go uh to you know i can't rub it out so that's an awesome feature of these uh, print and stick target template papers. You can add notes to it. Like for instance, on this one, I cut off the arrow. So just so I don't get confused, I can draw in the arrow head for future reference. I mean, I know it today because we're working on this, but when I stash this away into a file and go out to use it again, I wanna know exactly how, uh, what direction is up. Okay, so now let's move on to our fabric. So here's our quilt sandwich that I have already made and I've marked two lines on it. So I have my backing fabric, my batting and my quilt top. And if I was really going to, you know, make four borders, then my fabric would be twice as wide so that I could get four borders positioned across the quilt and separated by two inches, right? That's what we wanna do. So as you can see here, I have at least two inches in between. And when I, after I quilt these with the applique, I'll be able to trim them right on that stitched line and piece it into my quilt and it'll be perfectly sized for the quilt. And of course, if I was doing four, this fabric would be twice as wide, okay. Any questions on that? All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. So we have our templates in place and now we're gonna hoop. So we'll take, and I'm using uh, the 10 and a half by 10 and a half. It's like one of my favorite hoops. Now I could use a, uh, this design is only about seven and a half inches. So I could use a 10 by 16 and do two two repeats in one hooping, and then come over here and two repeats in one hooping, but I just thought for today's demonstration, this would be sufficient. So what's important now is that I'm going to focus, actually, first off, I'm gonna pull these down a little bit because I wanna have a little bit more marker visible. And of course you would measure all this, right? You would know the length of your fabric and how much excess fabric to leave so that you can hoop appropriately and uh okay so now we're going to take our top frame and place that right on the quilt sandwich and what i want to make sure is that this line is going to hit the hoop at the same location and because i don't have enough fabric here you know at the top of the hoop i'm going to pull this up a little so that we get that line at the hoop so this technique of using a marked line to guide the fabric in a straight fashion is why we have the alignment guides or the placement guides on our hoops. It doesn't matter to me if this is a, a metric or an imperial measurement. All I care about is that this line hits the 11 here and the 11 here, and it doesn't. So I have to lift this top frame and reposition the fabric a little bit to bring that down so that it does reach the 11. And really it, the hardest part actually is starting because once you get it started, it's all, um, it's really a lot easier underneath the needle. Oh, come on now, cooperate. There we go, getting a little bit better. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we are our mark is hitting the 11 and the 11, you know, that's close enough for me. Pretty good. Okay, so we're going to stitch this first design over at the machine and add our applique fabric. But I wanna to talk to you about preparing your applique fabric. So because this is raw edge applique, 
I'm going to apply a fusible web to the wrong side of the applique. And I have used our Fuse Me. I've already applied it. Now I'm just removing that protective paper. And so now my applique has uh, the fusible web on the wrong side. And I will make sure that I place that wrong, you know, wrong side down when I start my applique. Okay, let's move over to the machine. All right, so I already have my design in place and I will use the navigation keys to uh, move the design, move the needle over to the center of my template. So we're just going to, and <laughs> I'm not quite there. So I'll, I can just pull this down a little bit and just as long as I do that in a straight fashion, I'm going to be fine. There we go. Now, if you're worried, are you square? Are you straight? Again, I can check where my lines on my placement guide is hitting the hoop. And I'm at 11 and a half there. And I'm not quite there here. So let's go ahead and pull that over on this side. And now I'm ready to stitch. Okay. So we'll lift the presser foot. And I always peel the template towards me underneath the foot. I just peel it back and position it, just stick it kind of out of harm's way. Now I'm gonna stitch this in red thread, which, you know, it's gonna be ugly, but I want you to be able to see it. And so you can see, I am stitching right on that line. I mean, I really nailed it pretty darn close. I mean, it, as you look, you can see it's off the tiniest little bit down here but boy for me for quilting it's fine because you know quilt sandwiches have three layers so you have a lot of texture here and as you quilt you know it changes it's not like a heavy cutaway with a cotton twill fabric where you're not going to get any movement at all you have a lot of movement in a quilt so you have to be forgiving to yourself and don't get so hung up on being a thread width away from where you intended to be. Just let that go. Nobody's ever going to see it. Okay, so we're just going to stitch this. So this is my accent quilting, as you remember, right? This is actually going to be uh, visible after I trim my applique away. So let's go ahead and take that applique fabric, and I'm feeling where that fusible web is. I can kind of see a little bit of a shine, so I know that's the wrong side. And I always make sure I, I at, you know, position my applique fabric with a generous inch, maybe an inch and a half beyond uh, that area. Now, what's important here? We want to make sure that our applique fabric is going to uh, be covered by our next row of stitching, which is just inside of these accent stitches. I cut my strip of applique fabric four inches wide. My actual design is not that big. It's only about three and a half, maybe three inches. So ample fabric here, amp ample fabric. All right, so we'll just lay that down and let it stitch. And it's gonna tack it down. It's gonna run and give me that wave outline. And then it's gonna go ahead inside the wave and add texture. And you know, it's not gonna be very pretty in this red thread, but I wanted to make sure that you could see it. And we'll just let this stitch and it's only going to take uh, two minutes to do this. And then we will uh, lift our applique and advance our fabric and we'll go to the next design. We will not do this one at this time. We'll just uh, move on to the next design. We'll let that stitch. How many of you stay with your machine when it's stitching? Do you stay and watch it or do you go off and do another task? Tell me what you do. I often go off and do another task. 
and kind of that's when I get in trouble, right? That's when the machine wants to do something that we hadn't intended it to do. Um, or if you have a pet, maybe the pet gets a little too close to the, um, the hoop. Let's see, Dawn, you stay. Okay, Monica, you stay. Judy, you stay. Tracy, you walk away. Deanna, you walk away. I know, me too. Let's see, somebody, who said it's so relaxing to watch? Yeah, Kathy, it is. It is definitely relaxing to watch. You know, I'm always amazed when I go to a quilt show and I see how many people stay and watch an embroidery design or a long arm quilt, you know, stitch. They just stand there for quite a long time. Okay, here's our design. Okay, it looks, you know, doesn't look that great right now, right? It, you have to have confidence in this that it's gonna turn out as you had hoped. All right, so now we're gonna peel back our applique fabric, get that out of harm's way. You know, and this is where our template is gonna come in. And I'm gonna use this one, because this one I trimmed really, really well. Uh, and when I mean really, really well, let's take a look at the two difference. So in this template, I have the arrowhead still there, and this is my top stitch line, right? But on this template, I trimmed it so that the edge of the template is right at that stitch line. So I'm going to just kind of get this one out of harm's way, and this is the one that we're going to use. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to lift this top frame, and we're going to slide it over the head of the machine and advance our fabric. Now we're holding on to a lot of stuff here, right? Because we have that applique fabric strip hanging in the back. We wanna make sure that's not caught in the hoop, but it might be, and then if it is, we'll just take a moment to pull it free. So let's see. Now, if you're new to this, you most certainly can pull the hoop out a little bit. So just bear with me while I do this. It takes just a moment. So I am going to slide this out just a little bit so you get a better view. And I'm going to take my template and I'm going to position it. I'm focusing on that line on the template with the line on the quilt, right? So I'm lining that up. And then I'm going to peel back that applique fabric and see how close I am. I'm a little further away. So I can just reposition that and... You'll do this like the second, your third hooping, you'll be a pro at this. Okay, there we go. So that's going to connect pretty well. All right. So now we're going to put that back in place. And I'm just uh, going to check my position and my dead center over. I am, but I can't get quite to it. So. I'll readjust my fabric and I'm going to come down to the center of that template. Now, here's a trick if you're really worried about if you are square in the hoop. So we can go to our trace feature in our machine and I'm going to move the needle to the outside edge of the design. And I'm now going to move the needle so that or the foot so that it comes here. And as it does, I'm going to keep an eye on it so that this line on both the template and the quilt, the marked line, is still centered in the hoop, in the foot. Yep, and it is, perfect. So we'll go back all the way up, that's good. And we're gonna to go to the center. Okay, so I could stitch um, that line, but I don't have to, right? I just did that test, so I could actually advance through the design. So let's do that. We'll advance through the design and we'll go to the next color. So I'm not stitching this line, but I am going to make sure that this is peeled back and I'm not going to hit on it. I mean, I'm not going to stitch on it. So I really am like working that um, applique and I'm just going to lower that presser foot and stitch away. And as long as, well, Oh, I must have touched something. Sorry about that. Um, as long as my applique is lifted behind the foot, I'm good to go. So now remember, this is the accent, right? This is going to be 
just on the quilt sandwich. We're going to stitch those two accent lines. And then I'm going to pull down the applique fabric and it will stitch the wave accent and the texture inside of the wave. As you remember, right? This is our design. That's what we're stitching. So it um, right now we're doing the accent, the red, and then next I'll pull down the applique and we'll do the tack down of the applique. Look at that. Is that awesome? Okay, so as you can see, some of my applique is caught underneath the hoop. That's all right. You know, it's a monster hoop. It's the most forgiving hoop on the planet. So not a big deal. I'm just going to hold onto the hoop and gently pull this applique fabric out. There we go. And then I'll pull that fabric, you know, quilt sandwich back. What's important now is that this lays in a straight fashion. We don't want it to go like this. I want to pay attention. I don't want anything to happen like that. I don't want it to be like that because that's going to be a hot mess, as you know. Just lay it down, lower that presser foot, and it's going to stitch. Oh, man, I really nailed this. I am so proud of this. But, you know, it's doable. I'm telling you, it's doable. You just watch me do this, and uh, you can do it too. You might want to practice on a... On a scrap first, just do two hoopings. It's it's the connection, right? The first one is easy. It's the second repeat that is where you're really testing your skills. So um, that's what's important. That's what's important. You can you know make sure that this stays nice and flat. You can give it a little tug just to make sure it's nice and flat. And this will be done in no time. Again, two minutes. So let's see. What is that poll? What's everybody saying? Best to stay. Joyce Leary said she had a long stitch out and decided to leave for a minute. No sooner walked out of the room than the needle and the screw. Yes, that happens to me a lot. And, you know, I have uh, since made the habit of using the screwdriver to always tighten both the needle and the foot. And when I do that, I don't have that problem anymore. But Joyce, that used to happen to me quite a bit. And in fact, one time when I was um, videotaping on Craftsy, they were like, there's something with the audio, something with the audio. You know, you're in this studio and with four people, a director, a producer, and two audio men. And and they are uh, they're just so worried about the audio, some odd sound. Well, here the embroidery foot was loose and they could hear it jiggle. Thank goodness, because in another like 50 stitches, mm, that, that embroidery uh, foot would have been off the machine. So it can happen to everybody. Let's see, Sharon, what size hoop am I, I'm using? Right now, this is the 10 and a half by 10 and a half. I said earlier, I could have used the 10 by 16 and done multiple hoopings for sure. But I, in this demonstration, that design is only seven and a half inches in length. And, you know, one thing you should always do for yourself is set yourself up for success and use a hoop that's larger than needed for the design uh, when you're quilting with your embroidery machine. Because you need some wiggle room, right? You need to be able to, like you saw, I had to actually advance the fabric and then I had to move the design even a little bit more to make sure it was going to connect perfectly. So, um, you know, that's important. Okay, so let's see. Let's take this off and go over the, under the underhead cam so you can see where it connected. So, let's see, I'm going to use my... Uh, I'll put my board on here so I have something to hold it on. Okay, so where is that connection? Well, here is my three waves, right? So this is where it connected, right there. So I could trim that little line and you see it as, you know, very visible because it's in red thread. But you know, on the finished quilt, I used white thread in the waves and white thread on the accent area also, because you know, that's what you would do in a normal quilt, right? So uh, isn't that awesome? I mean, boy, that really connected just beautifully. Oh, I'm so proud. That's pretty cool. Let's see, and Judy Held, you said you came in late to the video. What is the material laying on? It's laying on a quilt sandwich. We're doing a continuous applique design on a quilt. 
you know, making a quilt border. So the fabric is a beautiful batik that I had, the applique fabric is a beautiful batik that I applied fuse me to the wrong side. And uh, then we added that to our quilt sandwich. So now let me show you how to trim it. Okay, I have another section that I had done earlier. So, um, and you'll see here, I, here, we'll turn it this way so you can see it better. Here's our wave, right? Isn't that so fun? It's beautiful. And okay, so this is what it looks like when you're stitching, Ugh, right? Not so uh, beautiful, not so encouraging. As you are stitching this over and over and over again, you know, you're not going to trim till it's time to take it totally out of the hoop, right? Like this, you know, because I use the red thread, you can identify the waves, but probably you're not going to use a red thread. You're probably going to use a light blue or maybe a white. So you may lose confidence during this process as you are stitching all this and think, oh, this is a hot mess, but it's all in the trimming. And when you trim and reveal what's underneath and the shape of the applique. That's the beauty of this technique. So I lift my applique and I place my scissors in between the uh, applique fabric and the, and the quilt sandwich. So I'm, I just snug that tip in underneath the applique fabric and I slice as close to that running stitch as I can. Now on that inside curve, I just kind of let that go. And then I pick it up again and I come back to the crest of the wave and I just continue in that fashion, go all the way around. And again, I'll snip that there and then again, pick up the crest, come all the way around. Okay, and then we go back in and we tidy it up. Now, this is a task, just, you know, trimming this whole border that I do in, you know, in front of Netflix, you know, watching a movie with my husband, because this is fast work. It's just kind of busy work. And it's actually very rewarding to do it all in one sitting and then reveal your beautiful border. And we'll do the same for the inside in the curl of the wave, as you can tell. The ocean's pretty dear to my heart. I know all the terms. Wish I was sitting on one right now. <laughs> Not always. Okay, so let's see. Almost. And, you know, you can snip as close as you want to those uh, running stitches. You know, th that tack down is nice, strong. It's a bean stitch. As you noticed, it's stitched three times, so it's going to give you a nice hold. And then after this is all trimmed, that's when we press it uh, with an iron, a hot iron, to permanently fuse the applique fabric to our quilt sandwich. Because if we press it now, at this stage, if we were to press it right now, we would not be able to remove or trim this area of the border. Ugh, that'd be horrible, right? So make sure you don't press until you trim. But then when we piece that into our quilt, you know, this is what you're going to be finished with. And that'll be hidden into your sashing. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Yep. Okay. Isn't that fun? Don't you want to go home and do that? It's so much. Well, you are home. Maybe you'll just turn around and go in your sewing room. And actually you could because that stipple seashell quilt package is downloadable. Mm-hmm. So super fun to do and very easy. You know, the key is in really in the digitizing. So if you're a digitizer, maybe you picked up a tip or two on how to set yourself up to do that. Um, but absolutely, it's really fun to do. And I hope that it's something that you partake in. Now, what else, uh, you know, of course, today's program was sponsored by our print and stick target template paper, our new version, which is 100% translucent. And it works in both inkjet and also uh, laser jet. And you can draw on it with a Sharpie, a permanent marker. It's also great if you are a free motion quilter or you want to debut, you know, if you'd like to sketch and debut quilting designs on a quilt block or so forth, you can just lay a piece of that paper down and, and draw away. See how you like that. 
Let's see. Uh, Kathy Beck wants to see the border, the finished one. Sure, I can bring the quilt back under the camera so you can get a better look at the actual quilt. Here we go. So yes, Barbara George says she didn't see any registration marks. You know, there are not any registration marks in that design because I used the template. And because if you remember, I showed you in this template, in this embroidery design, we have a stitched alignment mark. And you'll use that. You could stitch it to make sure that you are on your marked line. We marked our quilt sandwich first, remember? And then we placed our template on that marked line. I can bring that over just to review. So here we marked our fabric with a removable marker, not the Sharpie, but in reality, it really doesn't matter because this line is going to be hidden in the seam allowance of the border. Yeah. How do you deal with the bulk of the batting when attaching the border to the quilt? Oh, well, that I use my reversible piecing technique. I'm going to show you the back of this quilt. It's not real pretty, but um, it, it shows the each block is pieced with a reversible piecing technique, as you can see. So we have sashing on the front, that's quite beautiful, and sashing on the back that is contrasting to the quilt blocks. Doesn't have to be, but in this instance, it is. And that's a, a class that we'll do again, that we'll do in the future, but I don't have the step outs for it today. But the instructions are included in the purchase of this shell design quilt. So that's our beautiful border all for, and it could be, you know, I used width of fabric 45 inches. This could be 72 inches. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. And so just so that you understand the bulk of the batting. So my sashings are filled with batting, even distribution, just like my quilt block. There's no lumps, no big piles of bind of batting in my sashing, you know, so it's a fabulous technique. And, and we'll work on that because we have all kinds of fun things here. We have piece sashing, we have regular sashing, and then I have other samples to show. So we'll do that in the future. Okay, so let's see. So there is absolutely no satin stitch, Leanne. I don't like a satin stitch on my quilts uh, for this technique because, you know, I want it to be soft and supple, just like a real quilt, like if it was done on a long arm. So no satin stitches. St <laughs> stitches, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see. So print stick target template paper. Take advantage of that in 1999 today. And we already trimmed the applique. You're not supposed to see that. That's my cue for me. Don't forget to, for me, to not forget to do that. So. Those of you who love our software, are interested in our software, already using our software, you will benefit from a class from Ashley Jones. And she teaches this twice a month on Tuesdays. The next class is July 18th at one o'clock right here on Facebook, YouTube, and now on our homepage, dzgns.com. And so I hope that you will... Um, Join in and watch her, and here's how you can be notified so that you never miss any of our classes. In this video, we'll show you how to subscribe to a YouTube channel and follow a Facebook page. Let's start with YouTube. First, open your web browser and navigate to youtube.com. Once you're on your home page, search for designs and machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. Click on it and go to the channel page. Once on the channel page, click the subscribe button. And that's it. You're now subscribed to the channel. Now let's move on to Facebook. Once you're on your home page, search for designs and machine embroidery in the search bar at the top of the screen. When you find the page you want to follow, click on it and go to the page. Once on the page, click the three dots on the right side and select the follow button. And that's it. Now you're following the page. Thanks for watching. So I hope that you'll subscribe to um, our YouTube channel and also like us on Facebook. 
So next week on Between Friends, I'll be here at one o'clock and I'm going to be talking about t-shirt revamps. We're going to have a whole lot of fun with that entirely, entirely different topic than today, but we're going to take a basic crew t-shirt and change it into something, you know, a little bit more fancy and also transform a neckline. We'll have several different samples to show you. So I hope you'll join me for that. Um, I know many of you are waiting for the on the house uh, design. So let's see what you've been stitching before I reveal that. Before I reveal it, I just want to respond to Jen in their sewing room. She says, why didn't I create an SVG file instead of trimming the applique that she'd rather have a cut on her scan and cut? Well, I understand that opinion for sure and that preference, but this is a 45 inch border and um, I don't have a cutter mat that's 45 inches. And I also don't want to piece that border. You know, I don't want any seams in there. So that's why I did it. It's kind of an old school uh, technique, but it still works and anybody can do it. You don't have to have a cutter in order to do it. So this, this week's design, it, so the month of July is all about um, some fun blocks at the beach. And this is probably my favorite, the mermaid wisdom, get your tail to the beach. Maybe you saw me uh, reveal these at a class that I did here on Facebook back in May. So I decided to resize them to six inches so that many of you could do them. And now they are available for you to download. This week is the Mermaid Wisdom. So I hope that you'll take advantage of that and download it and you'll return next week to see what next week's block is. And I love the comments like Jennifer Alexander, you're excited about next week uh, t-shirt revamp. Yeah, it will be awesome. They're really fun. So I hope that um, you'll join me and, and watch. So thank you for joining me today. And I hope to see you next week. In the meantime, happy stitching. <laughs>